Okay, I think this might be one of my greatest contraptions ever. I'm really excited about this, and uh, so far I'm proud of it. And uh, I think it'll work. Jesus, now I know how my chicken got a broken leg. The idiots are trying to fly up inside the coop. Anyway, um, this is my automatic poultry waterer that I've just constructed. So let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, the system functions using these poultry nipples, which are not uncommon. You can buy them online for 50 cents a piece or something like that. They're pretty cheap, pretty affordable. Uh, but the key is these poultry nipples operate at a very, very low pressure, like half a PSI, one PSI, something like that. Very low pressure. So basically they could operate off of gravity. You don't want high pressure. So you cannot plumb the system directly into residential water pressure. So what I've got here is a float tank. That's what this body is. Now the system is not finished yet. I've got to glue it all up still. I wasn't going to because I figured it was low pressure, but this is dripping here and I, I definitely don't want it to blow apart on me and then start leaking like crazy. Anyway, this is a float tank. What I've got inside is I bought a, um, I think it's actually called a micro or a miniature PVC float valve. It was $10 on Amazon. Um, and it has, it comes with a half inch pipe thread. The key, this is key. I tried using a toilet tank valve. You can't do that. You can, it cost you a lot of money to be a big pain in the butt and I learned the hard way, so take my word for it. A toilet tank valve, the universal float valves, get ups that you can buy in you know, Lowe's for $10. The threads on those I've learned are a 7 8 IPS thread, which is iron pipe spec. You can't find that conversion to anything else. You can't find a 7 8 IPS thread to swap over to 3 quarter PVC. I planned the system originally thinking that it was a 3 quarter inch thread and didn't find out until I was already halfway through building this thing that it wasn't 3 quarter. So I found the float valve online, like I said it's $10, it has a half inch thread on it, half inch nominal pipe thread. You can find that fitting everywhere. So the float valve, you know, because originally I planned to have this pipe here be vertical and have the toilet tank valve inside of it that didn't work. So what this is. It's now, it's a four inch PVC pipe with a cap on both ends. That's, that's all it is. Just four inch PVC pipe, about a foot long, with a cap on each end. And inside of it is that half inch MPT thread with that micro float valve. So that float valve is in your horizontal. So what I've got here, my incoming water supply is coming in. It's a three quarter inch PVC. I've got a um, universal fitting there, or uh, is that what they call it? Universal flange. What about? I can't, can't think of the word for it. But anyway, it's a rubber grommet. It lets you, you know, put a straight pipe through a curved wall. It works very, very well. So universal seal there. And then let me see if I can see around back here. Oh, if you look around back here, uh, get my light in there. There's another universal seal oh, right there, and that's coming straight out the end of the cap. The way this works is high pressure water supply coming in, coming from residential pressure. It's about 50 to 60 PSI is what most cities, city pressures are. It comes in here, it comes straight in like this, and then there's a 90 degree elbow that swaps three quarter inch PVC to half inch thread. You can actually buy that exact elbow that's a, half, a three quarter slip to half inch thread. And then that float valve sits in here lengthwise like this. So when this thing is empty, or low, the float will drop, it lets in water pressure at 60 PSI, and it fills up this body. Now remember, it's only going to fill this body when it's low on water, so you're not actually going to see that 60 PSI transferred out here. It'll fill this up, and then it'll shut off. And when it shuts off, it isolates that high pressure here, and keeps it all on this side of the float valve, and so what you have coming out this end is low pressure. So you can see, I can sit here and tap these nipples, and they just drip real slow. If that was 60 PSI and I tapped that, it would spray out. You know, it, you know, it would spray out under a lot of pressure. So this is what you want. You don't want your birds to peck this nipple and get blasted in the face with water. You want them to be able to get a gradual droplet drink. Um, so anyway, like I said, I, I wanted to share this with you. Uh, what I've got, you see the pipes run through the floor. Underneath it here, that's again, that's my incoming water supply. So underneath, 
what I've got is my incoming supply right there. It just turns an elbow and it swaps over to a garden hose. And this is, like I said, it's just temporary just to test it out. Swaps over to a garden hose. That other line in the back there, that is a T as you can see off the low pressure side. It's coming out the bottom right now. It's capped. It's this cap. Uh, it's this cap right here. And I'm going to drop it down to the ground or down lower and then turn a 90 and go out this way with it. And I'm going to run a whole bank of these watering nipples underneath the coop as well. That way the birds can water. They can, there's still only a couple nipples in the coop so if they get thirsty at night they can walk over here and get a drink. Um, but primarily I imagine they'll be drinking when they're out during the day they'll want to come hit the nipples. So uh, this is just one more step on you know getting things automated so that I don't have to come out here and fill their little water bowl up every night. It's very important because I have to admit I was a bad farmer and I'm not proud of it but I forgot to fill their water bowl. So here's what I'm currently using. Here's their current water system. Little one gallon water. You can see how low that is. I filled that when I got home from work today about three hours ago. It was bone dry. I hadn't filled it. Maybe I filled it Friday. I don't remember. Today's Monday. They usually drain it in a day, day and a half. I definitely have to fill it every other day, if not every day I have to fill it. I forgot. So I got home today, it's bone dry, and let me tell you, they were thirsty. They saw me grab this thing and walk out of the coop with it, and they chased me out of the run because they thought I was going to... They were so thirsty, they knew what that was, they wanted me to fill it up right away. So I've been having to come out here and fill this thing every night or every other night. You know, and it might only take five or six minutes to do that, but again, that's just that much more time that it takes that it adds up. So if I can save that time with automation, by golly, I'm going to. Um, this way I don't have to worry about them running dry on water again. I know they I don't even have to come check. I, just, I know they've got water. Simple as that. Um, it's pretty important stuff. So, like I said, I wasn't happy with, you know, I'm pretty upset with myself for letting them be thirsty like that. I don't want it to happen again. Let me just tell you real quick on cost for this unit. Float valve inside was $10. Shipping if you want it overnight or if you want it soon shipping would be another another ten dollars been 35 bucks on amazon get a ship for free so just pick up a book or something while you're on there float valve is ten dollars these caps each cap i want to say it was a couple bucks um maybe three dollars i don't remember for sure the uniseals the universal fittings that's what they're called uniseals the uniseals were six dollars a piece from amazon that was the big catch that was twelve dollars i found them other places for a buck 25 a piece if you bought 25. So you would have had to spend about $30, $30 dollars to get 25 seals and then shipping. And, uh, you know, I figured for the cost of two seals that I needed, the shipping would have been another 12 bucks or whatever to get two seals from that place for a buck 25 a piece. So I just had to, I figured I'd just go ahead and throw them on an Amazon order and get them shipped for free. But again, those are very expensive. Um, so again, we're at $10 for the valve. $12 for the seals, that's $22. Um, these caps, we'll say they were three bucks a piece, so now you're up to $28. Each one of these poultry nipples, we'll say is 50 cents a piece. I've got a total of eight of them. I actually haven't put the other five on yet, so that's another $4. So we've got $28, $32. Um, the pipe strap, call it, you know, 10 cents a foot or something negligible. Uh, and then just random PVC parts and fittings. So maybe I'm, I'm on this thing all in cost for, I don't know, $35. So not as much as I'd like it to be. I'd certainly like to cut the cost a little bit. Obviously I know how I can do that. Um, buying those uniseals in bulk will certainly save you a lot of money. Buying these little fittings in bulk will save you a decent amount of money. When I buy all my PVC fittings at Lowe's, folks, don't buy this little T-fitting for 30 cents each time you need it, just grab a 10 pack. You're only gonna save maybe 20 cents by buying a 10 pack versus 10 individuals, but it never hurts to have some extra PVC laying around. So like I said, we'll say all in cost, 35 to 40 bucks. Um, not real happy about it, but the cost of losing a single bird due to dehydration could be catastrophic. We get pretty hot down here in the summer. Birds need a lot of water in the summer. I do not want to risk them running out of water. So uh, if it's something you want to try yourself, certainly give it a look. You know, if, if my description wasn't clear enough, comment below. Um, send me a private message, whatever you do, if you need more explanation on how it works. Uh, but from what I could gather, this is, you know, it's, it's pretty simple. I looked online, I couldn't find, I couldn't readily find um, inline pressure 
uh, pressure regulators that could drop you down from 60 PSI to 1 PSI. I just couldn't find them. I could find ones that can control up to 25, 30, 35, 40 PSI somewhere in there, but I couldn't find anything to drop you down to 1 PSI. So this works really well. Uh, something else you can try is just get that same little float valve. Just stick it inside of a five gallon bucket. It's the exact same concept. All you have to have is a float tank of some sort to put that valve inside of. I chose the PVC because y'all know from watching my videos, this coupe is very small and very restricted on space. I did not have space in here to put a five gallon bucket or I would have. Five gallon bucket was certainly a lot cheaper than um, these fittings here and that piece of PVC pipe, but I just didn't have the space for it. On a bigger coupe, I would certainly do a five gallon bucket. Uh, and really with a five gallon bucket, you can drill these poultry nipples right into the bottom of it. Save yourself a lot of a lot of effort there um, but like I said you know it's it's uh, I just want to share with you because I'm, I'm happy about it I'm really excited about it I've got to go turn the water off because it's dripping in several places I'm not gonna leave it dripping all night but I just wanted to make the video because I'm just testing out I'm real excited with how it's working so far so I'm uh I'll cut it off here I've got to take a bunch of stuff apart now to, to glue it all up I should have just glued it in the first place but I didn't want to glue it until I knew that conceptually it would work and uh, it looks like it's working so I'm gonna tear it apart and glue it but like I said if you have questions comment below subscribe rate it whatever you want to do i don't really care but uh yeah let me know what you think see ya